God bless you, saints. This is Pastor Leva with Mega Praise Ministry. We are here in St. Clouds, Minnesota, in the event of In His Glory. And we're here with the testimony to bring forth to you that happened with Pastor Manny Johnson, praying for the people. And this event happened with Mary Kay Proust from Marshville, Wisconsin. Were you sitting down in the wheelchair, Mary? Yes, I was. And then what happened when Pastor spoke spoke to you? What was it the words, get up yes. and walk? Yes. Okay, get up and walk. And what happened at that point in the testimony? What happened? I got up. I listened to him and I got up and walked because I came here for a total miracle to be healed. Glory to God. Saints. You just heard this, that Pastor Manny had spoken to her to get up and walk. I believe it was three times, was it? Yes. And she got up and has not walked. And how long have you been in a wheelchair? I've been off and on in a walker and a cane for five years. Wow. Saints, glory to God. There is a miracle that took place here. This is the testimony. Do you have anything else to say to them, Mary? God bless. God, God is Lord. good. God is good. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will what? Rejoice and be glad to be in it. Come on, speak it out, saints, every one of you in the United States and outside the United States, all of you wonderful countries and states. Let's speak it out. These are what? Glory days and not gloomy days. Glory for the righteous. Yes, right. But gloomy for the wicked. And we have such a wonderful broadcast here. And my dear friend, we love him so much, Brother Bo. And you know what? I just felt led in this area because, you know, timelines are extremely important extremely important now come on while Bo's getting everything ready back behind stage <laughs> listen I'm gonna tell you something things are just cooking cooking for the wicked and man oh my god it is so glad to be on the side that wins on the side that wins let us see where you are watching us from come on Look at that. Look at that. Glory days, not gloomy days. I love that. Thank you for putting that up there. Hallelujah. February 28th, 2024. Where are you wonderful saints watching from? Come on. What is this? Wow. Look at that. Just, just bring it on. And don't be ashamed of your game. Where are you watching from? Come on. Ohio. Look at that. Look at that. Look at Ohio. Look at that. Mississippi. Look at this. All that. Minnesota. Look at that. North Dakota. Whoa. Look at that. Ukraine. Hallelujah. You're calling from the Ukraine. We're going to bring Brother Bo. He's got to see this one. Brother Bo, look at this. So, Sonic is calling, is watching us from the Ukraine. Look at that. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. From the Ukraine is watching us. Uh, uh, Dallas, Texas. Look at that. North Carolina. I believe, look, North Carolina. Sweden. Look at this, brother. Both Sweden. Oh, my God. Look, Thank praise God the Lord. for the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I, you got you got that right. Boy, saving yourself a lot of plane tickets today, aren't we? Boy, God. This is so great. You know, these wonderful saints, these wonderful saints that, that are here. Reno, Nevada, where there you go. New York, boss, Boston. That's right. Look at that. Hallelujah. Is there anybody watching us from Africa? I'm just curious. Is there anybody watching us from Africa? Huh? Come on. Don't don't be ashamed of your game. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. We got uh, Boston again. Look at the, you know, the, uh, my God, West Boston. Okay, you got all the Bostons are coming up for some reason. <laughs> you know, thank God. Oregon, ah, look at this. And uh, okay, 
Well, you know, let us know. Let us know. How about Flo Florida? All righty. Thank you, Jesus. So this is great. Father, we just we just love the people and we love the saints that are coming on. Bo, you was with us on Sunday. Yes. Bo and his wonderful wife was with us on Sunday, and it was a, a pleasant surprise. And we just love, you know, my God, it's just, uh, um, uh, yeah, we were just like, oh, Bo's not going to hang around L.A. County. Yeah, yeah. But he was with us. <laughs> hey, our last podcast, I said I might show up. I might show up. I just need to confirm with my wife. I never, That's true. Back. That's I never true. got back to you, but. I did think I was true to my word and I showed up. Look at that. Look at that, Bo. They said, Bo is the man. Amen. Well, thank you. God bless. Appreciate it. Look at that. They they love you. They love you. They love you. And you know, and I really I just thank God for this glory days. I'm you're right. It is. These are glory days for you and I. And it just this is our there are upon us. There are upon us, yeah. and you have some really good things for us right now. And yeah, uh, actually, while I was driving back to the house, um, I was listening to your interview that you just did with Andrew. That was pretty wonderful. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, wow! Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to say what you just said. See, yeah. thank God for the internet. <laughs> yeah, I was driving back, and I'm like, let's see, what, you know. What uh, you know? What 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 he's talking about? And that was fantastic. It was a great, really, really wonderful interview. Uh, and uh, a couple things I wanted to bring up. Also, he brought up um, the um, the name Sophia, which is my wife's name. Uh, but interestingly enough, I sent you a, a link on your phone. Uh, Proverbs eight, oh. Sol Solomon seven twenty two. Mm -hmm. Do you realize? See, Satan is what he's a copycat, is he not? He can't yes, create. He He's a copycat. Yes, what, right. That's what was the name correct. that? He, what was the name he used? Sophia. Do you know what the Holy Spirit's name is? <sighs> Sophia. What? Yeah. Here, look at your phone. Look at your. Look at the link. You can post there for for the audience. What? The heck? Go to your. Go to your phone. I'm and, going right now. Yeah. So, see, all everything he mentioned was literally they took everything god did evil takes everything and perverts it right so people mm. need to go back and listen to the podcast that andrew just uh, did with manny and interestingly enough you'll come to realize that he, they even use the name sophia mm. which ends up being the, that's the holy spirit yeah so they so evil perverts everything everything they take mm. and that's why a coin will have two sides uh, and, you know, G John 10, 10, Christ, Jesus Christ comes to give us life, life more abundantly, while on the other side of the coin, evil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Wow. You know, that is the first time I heard that about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's it's it's interesting too because it's the if you read the article, it talks really it's specifically if you if you maybe I can uh, email it to you or post it to you, but you can put it on here. The, the interesting thing about the whole thing is it's it's wisdom, but also that you know the Holy Spirit it was it, you not know, you can speak if you say something negative about Jesus or God, that's one thing, but you say nothing negative about the Holy Spirit, right? And mm -hmm. look look what evil does. It's an interesting read, isn't it? Wow. Wow. So you can you know what? Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. It is really interesting what what happens. You know, I I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. We have we have um you know, it's it's so that is the name Sophia. I mean, I've heard comforter, I heard counselor, yeah. mm -hmm. but you're saying Sophia. Yeah, so I'll, can I'll, Sophia I'll, be? A, it's a, it's because the, the, the translation is wisdom, 
the comfort okay. and the wisdom, and then the translation for that is Sophia. So it's just it's it's interesting how evil literally has taken every single piece of what God did and copycatted it to the opposite side for for mm -hmm. for His purposes. What you okay? So Sophia, can that be? And saints, you know, please chime in on this one. Yeah, can I'll, Sophia I'll... be? Can can Sophia be both a man and a female? Because they usually refers to the Holy Ghost as a he. I don't know enough to tell you. I I, I okay. don't know. I I don't have the answers for all that. I I don't know. But it's it's of of the Trinity. It's the more feminine one, from what I believe to be the truth. But I I'm not mm -hmm. exactly hundred percent sure. I'll I'll, get, I'll email you the link if you like. Maybe I, we can post and have the viewers check it out and have a read through it. But uh, I just find the whole thing interesting that when he brought up that name, how it's just like, are you kidding me? Because I was uh, at a conference, someone actually let us know that. I'm like, what? And so we did the research on it, and it is, it's actually, a, it's its a truth that that is the, the name. So, you know, all I know is that evil is, is does everything opposite of God. And it just makes sense that that would even take it to that extreme of mocking the Holy Spirit. Wow. 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 Yeah. Is is the, the saints that are watching, um, if you have any meaning to that, let us know, because I, I think this is a great thing. I think this is a great, great thing. And so um, um, listen, confer on that because this yeah. is yeah, I think this is a great thing. No, absolutely. Yeah. Just all of this. I just it just it was a very interesting podcast that, that you did. And everything basically is, you know, I, I you know, I was very it was very much I'm really in agreement with everything that was said there, because, uh, you know, we are at a moment in time where things are supposed to manifest uh, and, and start. And mm -hmm, he was saying mm -hmm. specifically about the 2024. Um, I'm not sure when he got the prophecy about 30 days or, or 30, whatever it was. But it's interesting. Um, because we're literally uh, in two more days from now stepping into we're, we are stepping into specifically um, what we talked about when I was at your church, um, you know, a church the other day uh, with uh, the switching other calendars. They they twisted the calendars. Kim Clement did that prophecy. I think we did our last podcast and specifically that uh, they twisted the calendars. There's actually two calendars and uh, the actual calendar the the truth one basically states that we're still in 2023 we're not even in 2024 yet mm, mm. so so when according to kim clement and according to the here, actually, scriptures and before we even go into that here i just put this up if you want to pop this up here put this screen okay. up. okay oh sure let's pop it up bring it up guys bring it up so so there's the article right there you can you can do the mm. Google search on that. But basically, it talks about the uh, the wisdom of God, Sophia, the wisdom of God. Uh, and if you want to read this article, uh, uh, it talks about in so Solomon, Solomon twenty. Yeah, because there. he said he it says she about, is crying out wisdom, yes, yeah. and the wis and and she, the Bible says in Isaiah that Jesus walked in the spirit of wisdom. Yeah, and wisdom. Wow. Is Sophia. So now it's I, now this is kind of coming together here. Mm -hmm. wow. So these here's your scriptures, and then then there's more scriptures here that people can can Google and reference and do their homework on. But and there's also talks about Matthew and Luke. But it it just it's fascinating. And, and then again, so it is herself, and it's she. So it's there it is, and she there there it is. She is the fashion. So it's Solomon talks about she. <clears throat> now now now, saints, I want you to understand, okay. We're not saying the Holy Spirit's a lady or a man. Yeah. Both. Both. It's both. Yes, it's both. Okay. Both. Because that's because we have both, you know, it's both, you know. And so I understand this. I totally get I I get this. The two, you know, that's how the Lord is. It's not like uh, you know, oh my God, he's just he's just a man and and that's all God is focused on. No, 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 no. Wolf ways. Jesus is the son of God. He's also calls himself a mother hen. Okay. Because and those, those who know when you get, you know, in terms of when you get a spiritual body, okay, angels mm -hmm. have no sex. Thank uh, you. You've confirmed. So there, so there is no male or female technically like you have, wasn't it? You were saying like, when you go up there, they don't have any, you know, any yeah, stuff yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we have but, no. But, there is that, but you can like, but you can have like that. What do you call? You know the 
favoring one or the other, but it's not, but there is no sex up there. If that can be expanded. Yeah. I, 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 I loved it. Cause when I went to heaven, I realized that I was, um, uh, the word down on earth is called the uh, eunuch. <laughs> and when I, and I realized, cause I went into a house, very powerful. I went into a house in heaven and I went into the living room and I remember that uh, the, 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 the word bathroom is not in heaven. I heard the word kind of, I want to use the word more of a powder room, but there's no bathroom. It's not called bathroom. There's no, cause we don't, we don't have to, we don't have, you know, we don't have to relieve ourselves in, 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 in heaven like we do on earth. It's different. It's really different. So the Lord wanted me to show that. So when I went into the powder room, there was a mirror, but there was no commodes. There was none of that. There was no need for that. We're not reproducing in heaven. So we don't have those organs. There's no need for those reproducing organs and things that normally that we have here on earth. So I'm just... Uh, I, I it was there and 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 I was more real in heaven than I am now here on earth. You would think, my God, something's missing. I feel empty inside. I feel hollow. No, the opposite was I actually felt more real, more vibrant. I felt like this was the place that I should have been in the beginning. I felt like this was my home away from home, my real home when I was there. And I had a chance to see my house, but Brother Bo, I because I was there on assignment, I was not allowed to go into my house. I was only allowed to see it. And I remember the angel, it's not finished yet. Makes sense. And I'm like... <laughs> and I'm happy for that because I'm, I'm glad I get to speak with you, Manny. See yeah. You. Yeah, we get to hang out and have a good conversation. I, I love it. it we, had a, we, we had a great time, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. And so I'm like, why isn't it finished yet? Everybody else's houses that I'm seeing, it says, and then like the angel, the way he talked to me was different. Your assignment's not done yet. Yep. And as I don't know if that's everybody, is that the way it is for everybody? But there were homes that was finished, and then there was homes that were not finished. And these are people that were on earth. Their assignments. So so things we we collect things here in heaven. So when you get to heaven, you're gonna see all these. The tithes and offering, you won't actually see the check you wrote, but you're going to see what it produced for you in heaven. Ooh. You will see, as you have given to the work of God, what has produced for you in heaven. And when you give, and I'm not, I'm not going to be on this subject that long, but it's just coming up right now. Mm -hmm. Brother Bo, it's like, it's like prayers. When you're sending your prayers forth, that same thing works when you're sowing into the work of God. Right. It has a, a different aroma. When you pay your tithes, you pay your offerings, and you're helping your sin, it has a different aroma that God literally, you know, and so it's a it's an off, it's it's an aroma and Jehovah. Because I hear the word, they say it, especially the angels. Uh, they don't use the word Heavenly Father because they're not, he's not their Heavenly Father. He is their creator. He is God to them, you know, and their creator. We have the right to call him Heavenly Father, but the angelics do not. They do not call him Heavenly Father. I've heard the Jehovah, Jehovah. Because, well, if you just think about it from perspective, we're on earth, he's mm -hmm. in heaven, so he's yeah. our 
heavenly father. If you're already in heaven, then you would just call him Jehovah. You would call him father. That's all it would be. It just makes sense. Yeah, what, 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 and, and the, the, you're right. The, the saints are calling him, you know, father, uh, heavenly father or Abba father. Uh, and uh, it's just different. But there is other names that we haven't even heard of. Yeah. That is not even in the Bible yet. There, I mean, because God just gave us what we need to know. But when we go to heaven, you're going to see different names that they're going to call, uh, you know, the uh, Jehovah and, and Jesus. Just different names. Isn't, it, isn't like the most the most collective name, the most accurate, or the largest name you can call would be El Shaddai, from what I understand, isn't it? El Shaddai. Yeah, is, yeah. Is the, the most cumulative name you could call him if from what i did the, the research on but again it's 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 out. huge yeah the one of the things i've been saying when you guys get to heaven okay what is visit visitation like me are you know it's just a transition it's it's going to be it's going to blow your mind this is that's where the scriptures come in your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard the things God has for those who love him. And so uh, it's beyond. Yeah. And we just, I don't know how that's, well, I don't know how we got on that well, subject, but let's, man. Let's tie, you were just talking about tithings, right? Let's oh, tie tithing. into that. Let's, con let's and, continue with that. Okay, so, um, yeah, I like it. Bo Bo's interviewing me. I like that. <laughs> um, We're having I, a conversation. So, 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 so when uh, Mary came back, <clears throat> I saw what happens with the tithes and offerings in heaven. Mary Kay Baxter saw what happens on earth. And on earth, this is what happens. She saw, went into a church service. And she saw two angels behind the preacher. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having a good time with this water. And as she, and then the preacher, as they were, he was preaching, the angels would take the hands of, of their hands and put it on the back of the preacher. And as they did that, all of a sudden, his preaching became even more anointed. His teaching became more authoritative as they put their hand on his back. After that, he called for a tithe and offering. Then the angels, the two of them, looked at each other like this. They didn't talk, they looked. And next thing you know, I don't know where they had it from, but they pulled out something like a clipboard. And as the, as the people were giving up their tithes and offerings, these angels had the ability, you know, to look at what they were giving. It not from the natural means, from their heart. Yeah. If they were giving from the heart, what God had put it on their heart to give, the angels would write it down, and they would look at each other, and they would kind of give a grin of a smile. And then those that were giving are those that didn't give, that should have given. Mm -hmm. They would look at each other and they would shake their head. And then they right. would like look, look low. Because at the same time as they were giving, there was demonic forces in the room that was trying to prevent the saints from giving the way they should give. Right. And the enemy was putting thoughts in their mind. Well, you know, you can excuses. go and get some excuses. Yeah, excuses. Yeah. Like God, the Holy Ghost would say, give, hypothetically, give $50. But the enemy would say, no, just give 20. <laughs> like, like Ananias and Sophia did. Yeah. Now that's the wrong Sophia. Okay. So don't worry. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to make a clarity there. <laughs> and they, it was bad. Once they gave cheerfully from their heart, the number God gave them, it went up to heaven. That report went up to heaven to Jehovah. And Jehovah inhaled that offering. Wow, this was powerful. 
he inhaled that offering. And as he inhaled the offering, then he exhaled it. And it came out like blessings. It, it was inhaled and then it was exhaled out with the, the blessings that Malachi talks about. Yeah. The harvest, the rebuking, the devour, the increase, how God would open the windows of heaven. It came out of Jehovah. And so don't ever, saints, let the enemy rob you of your tithe and offering. Don't ever let that. Don't ever let people tell you tithe and offering is of the Old Testament. Well, God me, never calls me. God never calls His word old. We call it Old Testament. God never says that. It's just the word. David says, "Yeah, His word is renewed every day." It's the God living never. Body. Yeah, it was man that titled the New Testament the New Testament. It was man that titled the Old Testament the Old Testament. God never said that. If it was old and useless, why was it that the enemy fleed and backed off Jesus based off of everything they written, as they would call it, the Old Testament? Yeah. You know, well, why did, you know, Brother Bo, why didn't Satan tell God, well, you, you can't say, uh, turn the bread to uh, wine. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, every word she comes out of it mouth he, 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 it satan didn't go that's old testament it doesn't work <laughs> he didn't say that it worked then and it works now go ahead bro no he kept he kept saying it is written it is written it is written well where was it written in the old testament and that's all you got to say about it you know you can call it old or new it's just the testament one is before <clears throat> Jesus and one is after. That's a better way to describe the testament. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's before one Jesus testament. came. Yes. Yeah. Is there one the, there's one testament before Jesus and there's another testament that's after Jesus. But collectively it's just it's just God's story. <laughs> Period. Yes, and he's talking and so about far, Jesus. 6, years. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And he's talking about both talking about Jesus coming in the flesh as yeah. fully man fully god we all know that he was always was and is and will be yeah. and he before, already pre-existed before abraham yes. before abraham was thank I you am. yeah that's right yeah and then and then further to, let's tap into tithings because this is important in you know, the topic that we talk about because we you know we'll get into this as well too in the podcast but oh my god I feel what i want people goes. to understand about tithings is go to go study scriptures in the old testament or the pre jesus testament and what you'll find is something very interesting right jesus well when he was on the earth and then he fed the five well, actually this was this was jesus who was born <clears throat> then he gets his ministry begins his ministry and he feeds what five thousand well you have to really look at the details of what happened if there wasn't for that boy and the other gentleman who brought the, the two fish five loaves of bread five thousand would not have you see, I want to people, you need to understand one thing. There must be something to multiply because a thousand times zero is still zero. Mm. A thousand times one is, is a thousand. Okay. But a thousand times zero is zero. Come on. So if no one brought any food when Jesus was going to feed the 5,000, there 5,000 people would have left hungry because no one brought anything to multiply. Mm -hmm. For the same it. reason, we're stepping into the great wealth transfer. The great wealth transfer is something very important to understand. A year of Jubilee, it's very important to grasp what a Jubilee is. Whether Satan wants a jubilee or not, we've had hundreds of years go by, we've never seen one. Why? Because Babylon's been in control of humanity. But at some point, like we've said prophetically, right? Enough of this. Enough of this. Enough of this. Right? At some point, God gets up off of his throne and he says, 
enough of this. And when he says that, whether Satan likes it or not, it's not his timeline. Who wrote God? Who wrote the times and the seasons? God did. So regardless of what Satan has <clears throat> planned for us, you have to ask yourself, is that in God's time and is it in his seasons? And the answer is no. Mm. What evil's done right now is they've moved ahead of the clock that God set. And because of that, we're stepping into a redo. We're going to redo what happened in 2021 and move. I'm going to redo the whole thing over again with the rightful president. That's what's coming in 2024. It's the great redo. Now, you have to, when God intervenes, whether Satan likes it or not, there, a jubilee is debt destruction. So it's a, it's a, it's like what happened with Pharaoh. He was, he, whether he liked it or not, the angel, uh, first off, uh, it was, what was read? It was, first off, it was the, the ninth plague, which actually that would be, if you want to put this up, because this was the title of our presentation here, if you want to put this up, but, you know, the title was called The Coming Great Darkness. Okay, this is mm. not bad news. This is good news. Might look like bad news. It's all relative, right? Because who was a darkness for, Manuel? When you read Exodus the, which, 10. It's, it's for the wicked, yeah. Keep that's going. right. Okay. So the darkness, there's, you know, the darkness that we're about to see is not for the bride, not for us. Okay. It's for the wicked. So when you read Exodus 10, 21 through 23, it says the ninth plague, the darkness. Okay. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven and there shall, there shall be many, there shall be there that there shall be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt for three mm. days. Mm. They did not see one or another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. You see, so we're stepping into a moment in time that which has been will be again. Great darkness is coming upon the land. But it's a good thing because when Moses raised up his staff, God moved. And then the next thing that happened was the 10th plague. Well, we know that one, right, Manny? Mm -hmm. What was it? The angel of death. The angel of death. See, whether Pharaoh wanted it or not, you can't stop what God's ordained. That's you right. cannot stop God's timeline. You can't stop what's coming if God wrote the end from the beginning. And everything's going to happen in his time, and he wrote the seasons in his seasons as well, too. So we're stepping into a time point where the United States is about to fall. And so whether we want it to happen or not, it's coming, period. There are no options. It's going to happen. We're step, a, a jubilee is debt destruction. Whether Pharaoh agreed with God's plan or not, it happened. Pharaoh then chased them to the Red Sea after <clears throat> the great well, after they took all the gold and silver. And then he destroyed Pharaoh and the army at the Red Sea. He lured them out of Egypt. So you can't stop what's coming, but a jubilee is debt destruction. So it, Israel was paid for 400 years of bondage, okay? But what we need to understand is about back to tithings. There's a second mm -hmm. part. So we have so destruction of mortgages, student loans, uh, anything uh, paper gets destroyed. That the, the bondage market, the bonds get destroyed, which is what jubilee is. But there's a second part to it, which relates to tithings. My question is, like I was at your you know, church the other day, and I asked you know, the people in the congregation, raise your hand if you have even, even one, one piece of silver. That's nothing crazy to ask, because a piece of silver right now, an ounce of silver, costs about $25, maybe maximum $30. So you know, avoid a, a couple of cups of coffee and uh, whatever else you might get, and you, know, you can probably scrounge up $30 to own one ounce of silver. The reason I'm saying that is because 
God's a multiplier, but you must be holding something that he can multiply. So if he's going to, so yes, Jubilee is going to be fantastic for everybody. But the question is still, he's telling us through the prophets, Manny said how many times that God's going to move upon the world and he's going to flip the financial scales. Man, you've said that. I know other prophets have said that. This is not new information because why? God does nothing before first speaking through his servants, the prophets. Why? Why does he do that? So you might be prepared. So what I'm now asking is, Manuel Johnson, Dr. Manny has spoken many times that a wealth transfer is coming. We've both spoken that Haggai 2 verse 8 states, the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord. I'm just re referencing scriptures. Forget about the Sophia thing. I have no idea. I'm just making conversation. But I do know very <coughs> clearly that in the Bible, it states very clearly, Haggai 2, 8, the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord. My point of that is, we know God's money is gold and silver. We know financial flipping of the scales is coming. We know the only time we saw in the Bible Jesus Christ was basically pissed with righteous, ang righteous anger was the flipping of the, of the scales, uh, flipping of the tables at the, in the temple. Why? Because he knew that money, their love of money would be the root of all evil. You got Rothschild who just passed away. Um, you know, why are you so Roth, my child? Rothschild. Mm. Rothschild. <clears throat> Rothschild. Why are you so Roth, my child? Google that. You see, God's intervening upon the world right now, and it's going to get more intense and more intense. And we're going to see darkness. We're going to see the angel of death. We're going to see all of this in our this year it's going to be crazy awesome but my question back to what we talked about do you own one at least at least one ounce of silver because god has spoken through his prophets he's going to multiply his well when god intervenes we know he multiplies his blessings are 30 60 100 fold could even be a thousand fold probably will be a thousand fold or more because really, no one really knows a true definition of fold. It could be literally times, 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 you know, so it could be insanity. We could see silver and go to prices and numbers and prices we can't even imagine. And it would make sense because <laughs> energy is not destroyed. It's transferred. We That's went right. from in the in the 70s to mil millions of dollars into now the quadrillions. If you wanted to count to a million, it would take you 12 days not sleeping. Manny, we're at quadrillion wow. now, which is 31 million years not sleeping if you wanted to count to it. Okay. So what I'm showing is they've made so much money that when this transfer of wealth begins to manifest and then it's going to take hold and it's going to keep happening into the years forward, you could see that ounce of silver go to numbers that will blow your mind. So my question back to you is, do you own at least one ounce of silver? And so that's, that's, the, that's the whole concept to understand tithings because we're living in not political times. These are biblical times. That's right. That's All right. of what we talked about is written. We're talking about the, the completion of this two and a half thousand year prophecy of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 2 prophecy. Babylon's about to fall. Babylon mm. now is called mystery Babylon. <clears throat> and how long does God need? A single day. All these things are written. I'm not making this up. It's all written. If you go further, you know, mystery Babylon ties in directly with... All the hills, the seven hills of influence are all controlled by what? The money mm -hmm. of the Roth child. They control the purse strings. Everyone's bought and paid for. When God flips the financial scales, the seven hills melt about it. like wax. And so... None of this is ever going to happen. Oh, really? Really? See, people can think that none of this is going to happen, but it's happening. It's happening right before our very, very eyes. I want to play this one little clip. Maybe I'm not if it's going to work or not. I think it would, we'll see if it works or not. But I just, this is, hopefully the audio picks up. But I just want people to understand all of this is yes. coming. And let me see if I can share the audio. I'm having the same problems as last time. You know, um, 
you just brought up also the angel of death. Andrew yeah. also brought up the angel of death. <clears throat> yeah, because the angel of death is the tenth is the tenth plague. So we're ninth and then the tenth. So let me just play this real quick here and see if this works for us. Okay. Manny. Okay. Let me just let me do the share. Let's let's see. Do you hear that? Oh, all of this, the U.S. economy and policy with FedEx founder and executive chairman Fred Smith. Our financial capabilities to print money at will is dependent on the dollar remaining the reserve currency. And the so-called BRICS alliance, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, have set out on a deliberate course to dethrone the dollar. If that happens and we can't sell our bonds, I can assure you the living standards that we all enjoy today are going to be a thing of the past. The BRICS group is set to introduce a new currency backed by gold in contrast to the credit-backed U.S. dollar with countries lining up to join the growing initiative. If oil starts trading in non-petrodollars, such as gold or a basket of currencies, or if China and Russia start trading in yuan and ruble rather than US dollars, that demand isn't there. And the way of life for the average American will be done. It will be worse than the Great Depression. The US dollar has seriously discredited itself as the global reserve currency. That's according to Russia's foreign minister, who's been holding talks in Moscow with his counterparts from Persian Gulf countries. Recent uh, widespread report has concluded that more than half of central banks worldwide plan to shift their holdings from US dollars to gold. I'm talking about our currency being used throughout the world. You want it to remain. You want the dollar to remain the world's reserve currency. Well, I think it's bigger than losing any war. I think if it doesn't, uh, look, we are already reverting to third world status in many ways. You look at our airports, you look at our terminals, you look at our filthy roads and broken roads and everything else. We're like a third world country. We have something that's very powerful, and that's our dollar all over. But you take a look at what's happening to it now with other countries not using it, and you know China wants to replace it with mm -hmm. the yuan, mm -hmm. and it was unthinkable with us unthinkable would never have happened now people are thinking about it that could happen wow so what you this is not made up stuff this is news that you will not see for the most part reported in the united states you've got the BRICS nation which compromise right now roughly 60 <laughs> Many, 60 to 70% of the world population comprise the BRICS right now. Russia, China, look at the population of these countries, India. You're talking 60 to 70% of the global population has had enough of printing of money out of thin air. That's how the money went from millions in the 70s to quadrillions now in 2024. The money is so big, we can't even comprehend the magnitude of where it's at right now. Talk about that. And so because the money is now so big, these nations have had enough of it. And they're about to do something collectively that we're not going to be able to stop. Collectively means before there was like Saddam Hussein, Gaddafi, they try to sell oil and other currencies and look what happened to them. But now you're talking Russia. India, China, not even one nation, they've all come together and they've now have a global initiative to destroy and take down the US dollar. So why is this good or why is this bad? Well, it's good and bad because God's using, he uses all things for his glory. We know that. That's so right. the prophetic word is the brothers of Goliath, Kim Clement, the brothers of Goliath stand in glee. Well, I just showed you who the brothers are, they're the bricks. The brothers of Goliath stand in glee, meaning they're all happy because they're sick of it. They're all now together as one. The brothers of Goliath stand in glee. We will cripple you. If you go back and listen to that audio that I just played, sure sounds like we will cripple you is what they were saying, doesn't it? And with that, wow. and the we will cripple you is the United States, the Goliath. So they're going to cripple the United States. The United States is about to be crippled. It's going to be horrific 
one of the worst financial events in human history. It's about to manifest here in the United States. The brothers of Goliath stand in glee. We will cripple you. That's what's coming. Would, would you say this is, um, I'm, now he doesn't know this. I'm going to ask him, saints. But would you say this is the three days of the, the, the darkness that the, the darkness that okay, so so that's a good that's a great question because now we're trying to tie in prophecy with yeah. our best guess. So my best guess is I would say we're gonna have three days of darkness either in March, April, or probably by May. But I would say the three days of darkness is much sooner rather than later because why? Because if we're expecting the God to manifest, well, we know. Like, think about this, right? Like, all we got to do is connect the dots. So if we connect the dots and let's say, okay, well, wait a second. If God's going to intervene, would he pick a random day or would he might might pick his feast dates? What do you think he might pick? A fee, his his appoint because a feast date is his appointed times. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And that's what I would have assumed that he would he would use a feast day from yeah. the word. That's right. And when you study the word and you go back in history, you know, you've got very <laughs> powerful things happening on mm -hmm. feast dates. Uh, and which if you want to pop this screen on right here, let me just show you something. The 15th of Nissan. Okay, so 15th of Nissan is a feast day. Mm. <clears throat> Passover. So let me give you examples of God doing things on his appointments or his appointed days. Jesus is crucified on 15 Nisan. Isaac was tricked to bless, bless Jacob. Gideon's 300 army was assembled. The angel of death killed 185 Assyrian soldiers on the 15th Nisan. On the 15th Nisan, Haman came to came to the king to convince uh, to uh, con the Haman came to the king to convince him to wipe out the Jewish nation on the mm. 15th of Nisan. <clears throat> Daniel was thrown in the lion's den on the 15th of Nisan. King Belshazzar drank from the from the vessels on the 15th of Nisan, and his kingdom came to an end that night. Mm. What I'm trying to illustrate is we've got April coming up. 15th of Nisan would be the 23rd of April. Passover would be the 22nd. So, does something happen? 22nd, 23rd? <laughs> Huge probability. But no one knows for sure the day or the hour that this is going right. to go down. Okay? But I'm telling you, and the day before that, as those who know my pattern work, is 421. One two four. How crazy is that? Four two one, one two four. The day before Passover, does all hell break loose on the twenty first into the twenty second? I'm telling you, watch April. Now, in addition to April, we've also got another <laughs> complicating issue: is the Julian calendar, which basically mm. says, like we talked about, we're basically indicating that the Julian calendar states that. The 14th could be the start of the new year based on the Julian calendar, which would actually put Passover and Nissan 15 on about the 28th. So we could see something manifest here in March, in the last, last week of March. The crazy part, Manny, is prophecy. God does nothing before first speaking through his servants, the prophets. Yes. Well... What happened on last year on the 19th of March? You got Kent Christmas. He does, he, he has a prophetic word and he states that he, actually, let me just play that here because that'll actually be a lot of fun to listen to because I want the viewers to see that this on the fifth, this was again, the 19th is when he put the word out. Okay. And he said, in the next seven days, everybody assumed it was last year, but the prophecy didn't have a year. It's simply stated, it was given on the 19th, and in the next seven days, 
from the 19th onward, but no year was given. Mm. Get it? So no mm -hmm. year was given. So here's here's the prophecy, and let's have a listen to what we might stop. Here, let me just put this on here. Here's let me play this prophecy here because this is rather intriguing. Let me do the screen share. Screen share. Wow. 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 Let's see here. This is um. This is um. Pretty powerful, okay. saints. Okay. You know, share. Wait till you um. Hear about um. See this. Ray, okay. Can you, can, here we go. Let's bring here it up. Bring, bring it up, people. He said in the, Do you have it? He mm -hmm. said in the next seven days. There we go. He said in the next seven days. I'm going to hit a mortal wound to the enemy in the United States of America. And he says, as men have said, March winds and April showers, <coughs> God said there is a wind of the Lord getting ready to hit this coming week in the United States of America <clears throat> that is going to astound people it's going to mortally wound the enemy. Hallelujah. And it is setting the stage, says the Lord, for the month of April. God says, I'm opening heaven upon the church and upon this nation. And there is going to be a rain of the blessing and the favor of the Lord. I asked the Lord, I said, what is this mortal wound? God said, I ain't telling you that. He said, I just need you to tell them, get ready, because in this next week, you're going to see something happen <laughs> that's going to be reported in the nation that God is going to begin to do something supernatural by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wow. So my question to you would be this, right? My question is very simple. To answer your question, could it be the angel of death? Right. We don't know. And so you ask me. So all I can tell you is the prophets have spoken that something crazy is about to happen starting in the month of March. Mm -hmm. And we've and we know through four. I, I know personally four prophets that I have personally heard speak the words angel of death is on the earth. But he won't strike until he's instructed to in God's perfect timing. Okay. And we know. We started this podcast off, you know, talking specifically about the ninth plague, which was darkness, and the plague after that, and the plague after that is the tenth plague. The angel of death showed up, and the angel of death occurred when? 15 Nisan, Passover. And so either in March or April, we, I believe, based on studying and analyzing scriptures, we know for a fact the angel of death showed up at an appointed time, God's time, that was appointed, and that was right. Passover. Okay. So does it happen again? Again, nobody know, no one knows for sure, but we do know one <laughs> thing, the prophets have spoken, that we're stepping not into the Exodus, but the great one, the great Exodus. So wouldn't it be appropriate, interestingly enough, to maybe see all this go down beginning in March into April into May? So wow. we don't know for sure. This is like that checkmate move that you and I speak about regularly at the Red Sea. You know, to describe what happened at the Red Sea, because nobody knew what was going to happen at the Red Sea until it happened, right? That's so right. It was a secret. Yeah. And uh, uh, bring it up. <clears throat> So they didn't know, but God knew. Right. He told He told Moses everything in part. Now, Bo gave the scriptures, and I like that. He gave the scriptures, and uh, and I, I, he read it fast, and I want to read it again so people can know. It's important. 
he gave the scriptures. Exodus, uh, show it please, show, show that, there it is. Exodus 10, 21-23, then the Lord said to Moses, Switch, uh, stretch out your hand towards the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hands towards the sky. And um, according to that, uh, let, let's read it. Let's keep reading it. Keep reading it. It's, it's keep reading. It's the word of God. Bring, uh, bring the second half on, on us right now so they can see that. There it is, a second scroll. Okay, perfect. Darkness covered all of Egypt three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Bingo. What did I say, saints? What did we say? What did we say? Gloomy for the what? The wicked. Amen. That's right. It's your hat. Glory days, not gloomy days. Gloomy days. Yes. So we're seeing it. It's gloomy. So I wanted to bring that out. Bo gave the scriptures. I, I wanted to make sure you we hear that. So you understand what's happening here. The wicked has to be judged if there's no repentance. And so... Does God want to do it? No, it's not his name, but he wants to repent. He wants men to repent. But if they don't repent, then as we said with Andrew, judgment is knocking at the door. I, I would add to this. I, I believe we're going to see a couple things, two things manifest. I believe we're going to see judgment <clears throat> upon the wicked. But we're going to see chastisement for the bride. Correction on the on God's house. Yeah, chat. So it's it's judgment. You got to because he's because these wicked they've had four years to turn from the wicked ways. God's had enough mm. of them, so he's going to bring judgment. Okay, but he's not bringing. This is what people are missing. They're they're thinking the United States is about to be judged. No, farthest missed, thing yeah. from the truth. The United <clears throat> States is a covenant nation. That's God's right. Not That's right. Judge the United States. He's going to judge the wicked. But That's he will right. chastise the United States for what it did. That's right. That's right. That's right. And he says, Jesus chastens. He says, I chasten those that I love. And we are, we are, um, he chastens those he loves. So you, uh, the United States is not exempt from being what? Chessonin. We, we're not exempt from that. And we uh, I don't know why people think we are, but we're not. But why uh, would he chastise us? Well, let me give mm -hmm. you two specific reasons. There's two reasons, clear, perfectly explained reasons why God would chastise us. And I'll give you these exact reasons because you need people need to understand why we would be chastised if you want to put this screen up mm. spiritually we should be chastised spiritually why <clears throat> because of what happened with roe v wade mm. the the glass is full of children's blood paid for with the u.s petrodollar i'm going to explain that but the glass is full of blood 50 years and it was paid for by the with the petro dollar and explain that clearly we decided to kill the creator's creation the the creator and creation right so we the people founded the nation the united states under god all men are created equal and then 50 years ago we decided it's okay via the supreme court the law of the land then it's okay to kill the creator's creation. God turned his back from us for doing that, period, okay? And then to top it off, in, we Nixon took us off the gold standard in 71, and in 73, 74, June, in June of 74, we signed a petrodollar contract 
with Saudi Arabia. Mm. We can now create money out of thin air and is tied to the petrodollar. And so now this money that's created out of thin air, it's not God's money. It's not God's money. They can make as much of it as they want to bribe and pay off anybody and everything. And they did it. And thus you got Mystery Babylon. And because of Mystery Babylon's got unlimited funds, they've used these unlimited funds <coughs> to mock God for the past 50 years. And now we're at Jubilee because we've overturned Roe v. Wade. And we talked about the scripture before, right? It's Second Chronicles. If my children who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's right. Wicked was Roe v. Wade. <laughs> that was... People, that was the wickedness as a nation that we did. And then also we turned away from God's money system, gold and silver. So we mocked God as a nation that was founded under God. And now, the then it goes, then. See, the right? last line is, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Heal their land. Their land. <clears throat> Wow. Welcome to the Jubilee 2020 as 23 ends and 24 begins. No, we're not in 2024 yet because tomorrow is the 29th of February. But there aren't four, there aren't 29 days in February. Oh, yes, there are on a leap year. Tomorrow is a leap year because there's 364.25 days in a year. After four years, you add up the four years, the 0.25s, the quarters, you add them up, and then you get one more day. And you mm. add the extra day in Manny when? And randomly? No, you add the extra day in when? At the, the end? Yeah. When? Of the end of the month. End of the, the year. End, end of the year, excuse me. Right? Oh, you, I see what you're saying. Yes. See? <clears throat> so, and, so because Dees is 10, Sept is 7, Eight is is oct is eight, dec is ten. No, January is eleventh month. February is the twelfth month. Dec is ten. Dec is ten. Roman for ten. So we're about to step into twenty twenty four this Friday. Oh, so we can have a new year, right? Right, because we're we're jump we're leaping into a jubilee. We're leaping into god's appointed time and then the roman the julian calendar actually says as, as far as as the 15th 14th of 14th of march so i don't know we'll, we're all going to find out together how this all plays out in march we're going to see all the pieces come together because this is god's appointment it's his special time his special season but everything's screaming that the month of march is a start somewhere in the month of march will be the start of the new year we're going to see insanity go down in the world. Uh, and so that takes us back to the scripture. You know, the, does the three days of darkness happen in March? Possibly. What? Because let me, let me explain this. Think about this. Let me just have, let's all think about this. If the truth comes out, Manny. Mm -hmm. So if the truth came out, Manuel, that all the deals done in darkness <clears throat> automatically start popping up. Everything starts coming at the same time. However, this plays out, but some of the, all the sacred, secret handshakes, all the puppet master strings, everything gets exposed. Everything gets exposed. What's the one? So actually, there's only two things that the global that the globalists can do. They can pull the plug on everything. So you can pull the plug on the internet. Pull the plug. We've already seen the testing of that. So they can pull the plug on the internet. They can pull the plug on all the news media, all the TVs. Everything goes black. Three days of darkness. It's written right in there. Is that how this plays out? I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. And the other thing that we know that they always do, because Mars, please, people go look. The name March is a Roman name. The name Janus, January, is a Roman name. The name Februm is a Roman name. This is a Roman calendar we're using, okay? And the, if you look at the definition of Janus and Februm and then March, the definition of March is Mars, but the definition of March in Roman translation is war. They're god of war. 
Mm. So does it go everything go black for a few days? Do we see war? <clears throat> I'm telling you, it's going to be crazy. We just had Hunter uh, being uh, depositioned this afternoon. Okay. Every, all the pieces are coming together for chaos to break out because they cannot let the truth come out. Now, now, now you mentioned something earlier about Jesus and the money changers. That was the church, though. So correction also in the church. Judgment starts in the church. Okay, yes. So we, we see that. Oh, thank you. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> Judgment first begins in the house of God. Yep, right. And many prophets okay. have spoken that. So don't yes. be surprised that we see preachers dropping dead. Wow. Well, all, I told you there's a I told you there's a shaking in, in the in the finances. Uh, uh, someone put it up there for the chat. It does any and and real quick. Because it's already happening. It's just going to accelerate. Has anybody have seen anything on Bitcoin? Because uh, Bo was with me when I gave the word about Bitcoin. Did anybody see anything? And that, at that time, it was at 40 something, uh, 39, 38 something when I gave the prophecy. About Bitcoin was like 38, 37 thousand a coin. Okay, has anybody been following Bitcoin? Because that was a very powerful prophecy because it was it was connecting into some of the things Bo was is saying today. And let me see if anyone has seen it. Why don't you put my chart up? I just okay. made it this morning. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> So all these people who apparently don't do anything, don't ever do insider trading, are all a bunch of very nice people who are honest and do nothing ever crooked, all just super nice people. They never cheat or steal, do anything wrong. Um, they didn't, uh, so you've got uh, Bezos, Jamie Dimon, Z Z Mark Zuckerberg, the Walton family, the Walmart. They collectively have sold $9 billion worth of stock as of the 24th, Friday. Wow. And look what happened on Monday. Oh, for three days straight, Bitcoin went up $10,000. It actually this morning was up $13,000 as of Monday. Mm. I wonder what they're doing with all the money, huh? What a coincidence that they sell Bitcoin. I mean, they sell their stocks on Friday and Monday, Bitcoin explodes $10,000 for in, for three days. By the third day, it's up $10,000. Guess what they're buying? Mm. And well, guess what they're buying? Bitcoin. Cool. Bitcoin. Oh man. See, they now, don't now, have, now, they're now, not now. let their money sit in the bank. They're gonna do something with it. Go ahead. Now, now, okay, Bo, I ask this is great. This is great. Now, listen to this. So this showing you that God is speaking to his prophets. Listen to this. I'm gonna say, whoa, okay, how did he do that? Okay, that was pretty good. Oh boy. And I'm going to move it forth. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And oh, whatever the enemy is trying to do is not going to happen. You will hear them make an announcement and it's going to go all over the news, all over the media. And you're also going to see that Bitcoin is going to rise. It is going to go up. It is going to go up like you wouldn't believe. And, and whatever it is now, it's going to go more. It's going to double. You're going to see this happen. God's doing a shakening in the currency of the world. I saw gold triple. I saw silver triple. And I also saw copper start to go up like you wouldn't believe. So 
get ready, get ready, saints, what God is doing. And I saw such an anointing on the body of Christ. There's going to be a move of God of unity. God's going to start bringing in unity and with different denominations around the world and in America. You're going to start to see certain things. And the nation of Israel are going to start to rise up like you never believed. Now, I, I, now I said that is so you guys can see that, see what God is doing. Now, how many people remember that prophecy? Come on. Bo, Bo was with us. Bo, so, you know, how many people remember that prophecy? Come on. Okay. Now, why would God say that? There are going to be a lot of saints that they're going to go, oh, no, it's all the devil. I know I don't trust it. This is that. Believe me, the Lord said the enemy is going to try to poison the saints' minds because things are going to take place. I'm telling you, you can't let this happen because God wants to bless you, whether it is, whatever is cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin, gold, silver, copper, whatever God leads you to. Don't let the enemy poison your mind. This is well transfer season. Bingo. Please oh. listen to Manny, okay? Manny is the one of the probably the only prophet of three years ago that would even touch finance. I knew I knew a handful of prophets, and a man Mel Johnson was the only one who wanted to talk about finance because he understood kingdom economy. God was speaking <clears throat> to Manny about kingdom economy, period. Okay. So I want people to understand, okay. Bitcoin front runs everything. Okay. What did list go back? Wow, and I like to that. Manny's Go back and listen to Manny's prophecy, what he, Dr. Manny just said. Okay, what did he say? He said Bitcoin's going to go up, and so is what? What did you say, Manny? So is gold, gold. silver, and copper. I saw it in the spirit. Okay. Now, what, I saw it. And, and, and listen. Manny's not making this up, okay? Yeah, because we're Bitcoin, seeing it happen with Bitcoin. We're seeing it. Right. Bitcoin front runs precious metals. Why? Because... Bit precious metals will never explode vertical, will not be allowed to explode vertical in anything, any possibility of man uh, where man's involved. They won't let it happen. But it's God's money. And in a jubilee, no matter what they want, their plans will fail. And not only will Bitcoin, as we're watching, explode shortly and soon thereafter, gold and silver, you said triple, and I fully agree with you, because tripling would be what, what I see silver doing. So 25, 20 to 25 times three is on 60 to $70 is my initial target on silver in a single day. Mm. But it won't happen until God intervenes on the world. And that's We've already said it's basically now the new year starting. So March, April, or May work. And then April is April and May is Passover. Okay. So the wealth transfer ties in with the angel of death. If, if we're talking a March or April for the angel of death, there's your wealth transfer. There's your tripling of silver and gold in a single day, right after the angel of death. Okay. And Bitcoin wow. is front running the trade. And so I want to define front running. Front running a trade is a practice of the practice of trade. Actually, if you want to put my, my chart back up here, just so we people can look at this and then you can go from here, Manny. But if you look at this front running a trade is a practice of trading stocks or any other financial asset to capitalize on advanced insider insider non public knowledge of a large pending future event or transaction that's about to take place, causing a substantial rise in price. So they, all the globalists, these guys, Bezos, and everybody, they front run the trade on Bitcoin because they know the BRICs are about to attack the US dollar. They're front running the trade. So I'm sitting here with Manny. I'm not giving you, in, actually, I'm to the degree of inside knowledge I'm giving you is the Bible because the Bible is... The good news. The Bible tells you what is going to come because Ecclesiastes states that which has been will be again. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay. And so we know God's money is gold and silver. We know when God flips the financial scales, many, many tackle offshore. See, your kingdom has come to an end. 
You've been waiting the balances and your kingdom has come to an end. When God flips the financial scales, guess what's going to explode in price? You want, you want foreknowledge? You want foreknowledge? Read the Bible. Because Bitcoin's front running what gold and silver are about to do. Bo, tell them again. Tell them again. You want to read you want foreknowledge? the Read the Bible. Foreknowledge. God actually, God, read the Bible. It's foreknowledge of what's coming. Why? Because it even tells you Babylon falls. Daniel 2, verse 34. All pieces of the, of the Daniel 2 prophecy have been fulfilled. Daniel 2, verse 34. The when, uh, stone carved out by no human hand while you're watching hasn't happened yet. That's about to happen. Mystery Babylon's about to fall. God showed me the timelines. Many actually, many actually foretold what Bitcoin's going to do in advance. You listen to his prophecy. Yeah. I write on yes. the screen here. This is my January 22nd. It's private update for my subscribers. My January 22nd update said that on the 24th, Bitcoin cycle turns up and there's two potential spike points. The first one's on the February 7th and 8th. There it is, the first run up right there. And then the second one begins on the 26th of February. Boom, right there. You see, cycles precede events. I didn't know what's going to happen. I didn't know Bezos and all these guys going to sell $9 billion. All I knew was a cycle said that on February 26th, Bitcoin's going to jump vertical. And it did to the exact day. So what I'm showing you is that God is revealing his secrets to his servants. Bitcoin it's, it's, is just it's, warming up. You've said yeah. Bitcoin, we've talked about Bitcoin going six digits. So it means like a hundred thousand plus. Okay. That's a no brainer. Why? Because look at all the money that's going to be piling into it. And, and I spoke that a year ago. It. Yes. And I said, and so, um, saints subscribe. I'm telling you subscribe in a few days. I'm going to, God's going to allow me to release a prophecy update it's going to be two and a half minutes but it's going to be a prophecy update about what the lord has showed me uh bitcoin uh xrp whatever he's all the things Pro you must subscribe because you know i don't want you know in no funny business well you know they you know they, they'll they'll block me from saying i don't know but you must subscribe so you'll get it so you'll get it I didn't ask for this bow. I didn't ask, oh Lord, I want to know all about the money system. That was the last thing. And the Lord said, you know, somebody has to know what's going on in the money system in the world. God wants us to be the head, not to tell. Yes, that's the point. You got to understand the reason God's revealing this is because if he doesn't reveal to his servants to tell us to speak, the, his money's Haggai 2 8, a cryptocurrency to speak this out. If we don't speak it out, then the only people are going to benefit is them. That's right. And when we're doing it wrong, this happens. <laughs> you know? And, and, and But when you're doing it, but when you're doing it right, this happens. And so, bingo, we have to listen. And I really believe Deuteronomy 8. Remember the Lord your God. Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to accumulate wealth. He didn't say poverty, <laughs> He said to accumulate wealth because He wants you to be blessed and He wants you to be a blessing. That's what it's about. It's, it's not the three. It's not the three musketeers, one for all, and all for one. It's to be blessed and to be a blessing. If you think that the Lord wants His children in debt, down and out, you're reading the wrong gospel. He wants us to have life and have it more abundantly, and I believe that. And so somebody has, we can't all be saying the same thing. We got to have different prophecies from different platforms. So God has put me in this platform 
And I didn't choose it, but I have, but I will be obedient. Some people don't like it. Some people, but I have to face the Lord. Did I say what he asked me to say? I am not a financial advisor. I can only speak what he shows me. And he showed me a lot this week. So don't you miss Prophecy Update. And I'll send a copy of it to Bo. Because I want him to see it and hear it. And so when he's seeing it, he's seeing it. He's been knowing me for a handful of years. He's seen what's been happening. We can't, you can't deny it. These prophecies were given before it happened. We actually said on, our, on you can go back and listen to our Bitcoin podcast that we talked about, where we, we both spoke about this maybe about a month ago. And what are we saying there? Mark our words. You're going to go back and listen to this prophecy fulfilled. That was we did about a month ago in January. I remember, yes. Early February. You're going to go back, and when the ETF was approved, you're going to go back and listen to this prophecy, and you're going to watch, when you're listening, you're going to see Bitcoin will have probably doubled in price, exploded in price, because that time it was approved as an ETF, it dropped really briefly, and then it took off, where you're going to use this as a marker in time to watch the start of the greatest bull run in Bitcoin. And both saw it. ETF was approved. Yep, and that was Manny's prophecy that it was a yes. spiked up, it dropped back down briefly, not a lot, and then from then on, Bitcoin's been skyrocketing. And why? Because the globalists who have inside information call it what it is. It's what it is. They've all they they've sold nine billion. As we know about, they're advertising nine billion. Who knows? Was it was it 50 billion? You see, no one knows the real number, right? That's what's what they're posting. And all I know is that from the day they sold last Friday, starting on Monday into mm. now Wednesday, only three days, Bitcoin's up thirteen thousand dollars. And he started doing this on about early February. I found one article. So in, that was a first rise. So in the past 21 days, Bitcoin is up. $23,000 since February, I think, 4th or Look February that. 8th. That's so insanity. Thanks, um, you know. And I'm just back to, again, Bitcoin is front running what gold, silver, and copper are about to do. And yes, there are some wonderful coins that Manny speaks about as well. Um, you know, you've you mentioned XRP. I do want to reference, if you go to Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, believe it or not, and I think you can expand upon this, but the World Economic Forum, which is, you know, basically Klaus Schwab and the One World Government agenda, do you know what coin they advertise? There's only one coin they advertise on their website. You know what it is? Wow. XRP. Oh, boy. So get ready. So no, uh, but what I want to say about that is it's basically it's there's nothing godly about XRP. It's a demonic coin. But God uses what Manny for His glory? That's right. He stores up the wealth of the wicked all, for the all righteous things. All, and all things. things he used. To, so, but listen, saints. More on that later. Yeah. Um. Guess what's coming? Guess who's coming to California? In the next week and a half, I want you to be there. Our dear friend, Nathan French. Are you going to be there on Sunday? Love him. Love yes, him. he's going to be there March 9th and 10th, Sunday at 6 p.m. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have Brother Bo there on Sunday. We're going to kidnap him for a day, him and his wonderful wife. Praise God for that. And uh, it's it's going to be beautiful. And, and man, he he walks in uh, healings, uh, miracles. He walks in uh, humor. Believe me, he walks in. He <laughs> he's really funny. He'll have you laughing. 
And uh, so we're all going to be, all of us is going to be tag teaming, having a great time. Expect to be healed, expect to be delivered, expect to be. Send your prayer request in. We are going to be laying hands on all the prayer requests. Send the prayer requests in. Send them and we're going to bring in your photos, your prayer requests in. We're going to be me, uh, 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 Nathan and Bo and Sophia going to be laying hands on your wonderful prayer request send them in send them in send them in now send them in now and listen i've always you know this is we've extended our ministry because we needed to because there i it was a it's a great need out there and the veterans are in need why they fought for our country now they're fighting for their life are you kidding me? This should not happen. As much we so we're going after to bring the homeless out of off the street, and we're going after the veterans to get them off the street. It is a shame that we can have a house and they only have a tent, and some of them don't even have that. And I'm asking that you will partner up with our ministry and be a partner weekly partner, monthly partner, whatever God puts on your heart, put on your heart to help us because it's a never ending task. But the smile on their face, when you can say, we have a shelter for you, we have clothes for you. That's right. We have what? Food for you. And guess what? We also have the gospel for you. We have the gospel. So I'm asking that you will let the Lord touch your heart. Sow your most generous seed. So it and then we have uh Venmo, we have Cash App, we have it, and we're uh we have uh PayPal. Uh, if you want, you can send a check in with your prayer request. And I'm asking you to partner up. We're gonna hear those words. Well done. Well done. Bo, how can they connect with you? My website is gold twenty twenty two zero two zero forecast dot com. Um, so that's, you can also go to YouTube and put my name in on YouTube and more recent or most recent videos will pop up there as well. So and I'm closing. I just want to say this. We talked about tithing and I'll finish with tithing again. Number one is, you know, Manny and his wife do an incredible job to get the news out before the news. Mm -hmm. Remember the thing about planting seeds. To plant seeds, if you plant seeds, you will reap what you've sown. If you plant seeds in good soil, right. you will reap a bountiful harvest. Manny is one of the most blessed prophets that I know of, and I love him. So he's an incredible, Thank incredible you. man. And secondly, I'll finish on this. Do you own a wealth transfer is coming? The prophets have spoken. Do you own at least one ounce of silver? Because God wants to bless you. So God bless everybody. This is going to be an awesome year. March is right around the corner. And I in these next 90 days, March, April, and May, are expected to be truly uh, biblical as we step into March. And then we got Passover. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a year the world's never going to forget. <laughs> and like we said, this is not the dark the dark hours, you know, the darkness is coming. It's not for them. I mean, so it's not for us. It's for them. Because these are what? Glory days. Saints. Not gloomy days. Get your hats. Let's celebrate. Don't wait till the last minute. I want you to get your glory day hat. We love them. We pray over them. If you ask us to anoint them, we will put an anointing oil on them. You know, you just got to request it. And uh, and that's the one we've, we've traveled with. Bo was with us when the oil was going. She was with us. So so we still have it. We still have the oil. We've been using it a lot. Look, we still <laughs> Look at that. Glory to God. You know, so we're in celebration mode. Get your glory day hat. Order it today. Go ahead. It's about, I think it's a week turnaround. And we're in celebration mode. I'm in celebration mode. Fish taco mode. I'm not going to stop. Glory to God. So we'll see you next time on Behind the Scene. Love you guys. Bye-bye.